going straight oh, and straight as an arrow. I'll pay the price and just the time. This place hasn't even had a coat of paint since I was here last, you know, isn't it? Oppressive, isn't it? Makes you feel guilty before you walk in, doesn't it? <coughs> Liable to admit to all sorts of crimes you never even committed, you know what I mean? <sighs> Same old magazines I see. The British Felon. <laughs> the Safe Crackers Weekly. <laughs> Just a joke. Well, you've got to, ain't you? Eh? Huh? Ain't you? Oh, all right. <laughs> Someone else in there, is there? Yeah, yeah. And you two before me. Still, I'm used to biding my time. So are you, ain't you? Eh? Ironic, though, isn't it, really? I mean, the first thing they tell you when you come out on parole, they say, keep away from bad company. And they stick me out here for an hour, a couple of villains like you. <laughs> I mean, it's the one place you guarantee bad company, isn't it, eh? <laughs> what makes you think we're bad company? Well, come off it, mate. I mean, you're in here for a start, ain't you? Eh? Besides which, I know the criminal mentality. Certain signs. I mean, you're a couple of odd lads, aren't you, eh? Taciturn, you know what I mean? GBH. Assault with a deadly weapon's written all over you, isn't it? We're here to give a quote on the decorating. <laughs> <laughs> well, assault with a deadly distemper brush, then. <laughs> Mr Fletcher. Yes, Mr Fletcher. Yeah? I won't keep you a minute. Sit down, please. Thank you. This is Chapman, Mrs. Shirley Chapman. How do you do? Suppose you want this, will you? My dog licence. Your parole licence. Well, same difference, isn't it? You got us on a leash, haven't you? There are certain conditions of parole you're expected to comply with. If you don't like it, you can go back in and finish your porridge. No, no, no. I'll go along with whatever you say. In your case, it's not too difficult. You report weekly to me, you stay out of the company you previously mixed with, and as soon as possible, you start the gainful employment which you guaranteed as part of your application for parole. Oh, yeah, the job. Now, there might be a bit of a problem now. Problem? Yeah, well, you see, Isabel, my old lady, she fixed me up with that job, you see. Uh, the cardboard box factory. That's right, on the North Circle, yeah. Well, she was very friendly with this, uh, with this owner, you see, Jessup, Reg Jessup, you see, and he, he was the man who offered me the gainful employment line. Yes, I know. I have his letter on the file. Yeah, well, since then, you see, in the intervening time, since that letter, uh, the friendship between him and, and my missus has sort of, uh, well, it's blossomed, you know. Blossomed? Yeah, yeah. Or to put it another way, they now live together. <laughs> live together? Yeah, live yeah, they're together, yes, yes, both at once, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cohabit, I think, is the phrase, isn't it? And there is no way that I'm going to work for a man called Reg, who is shacked up with my old lady. <laughs> This is terrible. I had to submit your home circumstances report to, to endorse your application for parole. Yeah. In which I stated that those home circumstances were stable. Oh, yes, they are stable, but the horse is bolted. <laughs> <laughs> or in this case, uh, the old mare. <laughs> Mind you, give Isabel credit where credit is due. She didn't let on and mess up my parole, did she? But the two most important factors in obtaining parole are A, marriage, and B, employment. Yeah. Here you are out, and I find you have neither. Yeah, well, yeah, put it like that, I suppose that is true, yeah, yeah. Well, this puts me in a most embarrassing position. Doesn't do me a lot of good either, does it? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot worse for me, ain't it, girl, eh? My life's in ruins all around me, ain't it? You don't seem particularly devastated. And I suppose you knew well in advance. Me? No, 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 no. No, bombshell. Bombshell. It'll take me a long time to get over it, if I ever do. What I really need is a sort of period of readjustment, I think, by the sea or something like that, you know. <laughs> Mr. Fletcher, we have a practical problem here. Your wife supported your home and family while you were in prison. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. She had a good job. Yeah, yeah. As uh, manageress of a dry cleaners, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. We were never short coat hangers. <laughs> Mind you, that was uh, that was before him, rollicking Reg Jessup the car. 
<laughs> then I imagine that since him, your wife's salary will not be coming into the house. No, 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 it won't, no. She don't work anymore now. She lives in the lap of luxury up near Chingford. <laughs> but you still have a family to support and, and the mortgage payments to make. Oh, yeah, well, you see, my two daughters, Ingrid and Marion, they're working, so it's all right. Oh, you're quite content, are you, to be supported by the female members of your family? Well, the trouble is, my son, Raymond, he's still at school, you see, but it is his last term, so he'll be able to chip in with the rest of them. <laughs> I've had a thought. Oh, yeah? Is this too outrageous? What? Go on. You work. You assume some of the responsibilities that others in your family are born all the years you were inside. I intend to work, but I'm just not going to work for my wife's cardboard lover. <laughs> Fletcher, I don't want to give you a hard time. My job is to help you. Why do you think I'm here? For the money. Well, must earn a decent screw, though, don't you? Oh, not when you have a husband and two kids to support. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. He sits at home, does he? Oh, yeah. He's quite happy to live off a woman, is he? He sits at home because he can't find a job. Well, can't you find him one? Oh, not in his field. Oh, not in his field. Oh, you didn't tell me that, did you? He's a farmer. <laughs> he is an aerospace engineer. Perhaps that tells you how tough it is out there. Fat chance I've got of ever getting off the ground in. Well, we'll get you something, and you will take what you can get. All right, all right, all right. I'll, uh, I'll check in next week, see if you found anything, all right? Unless I get in touch with you before, then. Well, that's no mad rush. Meanwhile, sign on. How are you fixed for cash? Well, I did have all the money that I'd saved up when I was inside, but I blew that as soon as I got off the train. In a betting shop or a pub? Neither, as a matter of fact. I've got two bars of fruit and nut out of a slot machine. <laughs> Hello, John. What sort of day have you had? Any tea in the pot? No, but you can put the kettle on. <laughs> no, I don't, man. What sort of day have you had, then? What time do we eat round here? Well, I'm going out and Raymond's eating. But he can always pop down the new takeaway kebab house and get you something. Oh, God. Have the Arabs taken over Muswell Hill as well? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to those, all those nice English traditional Chinese takeaways we used to have? <laughs> I thought we'd all have a nice uh, meal in together, you know, all the family, like... No, we've all made plans, Dave. Uh, I said, what sort of day have you had? Oh, not bad. I, uh... I popped into the white art for a swift off. Then I, uh, had a pint and a pie in the anchor. Signed on, of course, at the, lo at the labour. And then I, uh, popped in the magpie for a swift off. And then I went down to the old ship for a swift off. <laughs> en route to the Rainbow Club. <laughs> Down the rainbow. It's all that walking about made me thirsty. <laughs> Dad, you're not supposed to mix with bad company. I didn't. I sat on my own. Well, down there, you see all your old crowd. There's no old crowd left down there now. They're all inside. <laughs> Did you see your probation officer? Yeah, right, little tart she is. Yeah, I thought when I met her, when she was compiling her report on your domestic situation. Mm. She's no fool, I thought. I don't suppose she was taken in for one minute by your broken-hearted act. How can I do a job of work with my life shattered? My life is shattered. I told her, bombshell it was. Oh, leave it out, Dad. You knew the situation months back. Yeah, but it's only just beginning to hit me now, coming home here to an empty house without her. No tea in the pot. No dinner in the oven. Ready to play. Oh, bleeding play school now. Isn't it? Yeah. That's all Mum was to you, housekeeper. Oh, I don't know how she could abandon you, kids. I really don't. Abandon? Abandon? Well, Scarborough offered that other bloke then. Oh, look, Dad, I'm 26. It's been two years since Marion's lived in this house on a regular basis. What about Raymond? He's only a schoolboy, isn't he? Oh, he just. And let me tell you, Mum did not Scarper until after Raymond had sat his last day level. <laughs> See my Led Zeppelin tape? Oh, don't ask me, Raymond. You leave things all over the place. What time is it? Ten to. See my bicycle pump? <laughs> it's in the lab. Oh, God knows why. How are you, son? How's it going, all right? I can't shake off this guitar. Ingrid, you see my extendable steel tape measure? Oh, do you really need it this moment, Raymond? No. What time is it? Ten to. <laughs> Mm. I'm late then. <laughs> Where did he get his A level in lethargy? <laughs> He's quite bright academically. Oh, yeah. He 
He seems to lack something. <laughs> Charm, I think it is. Yeah, that's what his school report said. Bright but surly. Bright? <laughs> Needs a new battery, if you ask me. <laughs> you know, since I've come out, he's hardly exchanged two words with me. Well, being the youngest dad, he's seen the least of you over the years. So? Well, maybe he's not quite sure who you are and he's afraid to ask. <laughs> Listen, he has withdrawn into his shell because his mum's left him, that's why. Dad, mum owes this family nothing. The reason this family's intact, the reason we've got what we have is all down to mum. We're all grown up now, and she's got a chance to snatch a few years' comfort and luxury. Oh, I see. Comfort and luxury, that's what she wants, is it? Don't we all? Well, I am here to provide that. Good. Well, you can start with the garden. Huh? No-one's touched it for years. It's like the Matto Grosso out there. The Matto what? The Matto Grosso. It's a deep, impenetrable jungle. The world about us, BBC Two. <laughs> Listen, I am not here. I am not here to cultivate and carve my way through the bleeding jungle, am I? <laughs> I am here to provide the luxuries that this family has not got. I want you to draw from the labour. Now, listen to me, nifty knickers. <laughs> Just sit down there and listen to me, will you? Now, look, my motto has always been it pays to plan ahead, to put something aside for a rainy day, right? Oh, blast, I've broken nails. Listen to me, will you? <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Now, look, I'm trying to tell you that, unbeknownst to you, a long time ago, I put aside a little nest egg against the future, which is now the present. <laughs> did you? Yes, I did, so we're all going to be all right, see? Forget it. Wait, you, you mean like... Post office savings, a building society, something like that? No, no, not exactly like that, no. Um, my particular nest egg is, uh, well, it's buried in a turnip field in Essex. Well, wouldn't it have been safer in a bank? No, it was a bank it come out of. A bank? Stolen Keep money! Keep your voice down, will you, Raymond? So that's why you've had no anxieties about getting a job. So this is the going straight we keep hearing about. I am going to go straight. Huh. Listen, that money is a legacy. That is just a few, th few thousand quid as a cushion against the harsh realities of life which I don't intend to foist upon this family. This family don't need it, Dad. This family have got by without it. Listen, I want to buy your things, don't I? Your mum might come back if she thought I got more than promises to offer her. No, she won't. All mum ever wanted, all any of us ever wanted, was an honest wage in this house. Not a dishonest cushion. Look, I, I intend to earn an honest wage, don't I? But it's not bleeding easy when you've got a record. No, it's not easy. But I know someone who's done it. Who? Leonard. Leonard? Lenny, then. Young Gobba? You seeing him, are you? We keep in touch. Oh, yeah. And he's doing all right. Even though he's got a job he don't like much, he's prepared to take the rap with the smooth. What is he, a French polisher? <laughs> Oh, Dad, he's got a driving job. Heavy goods. You can do better than him, you know. I'm the judge of that. All right, then. When do you see him? When I can. Oh, yeah. Well, who are you titivating yourself up tonight for, then, eh? Doing your nails and doing your hair and ironing your dress, eh? Leonard. Oh, he's in London, is he? Yeah. He's upstairs having his shave. <laughs> his what? Go Fletch. Good to see you. Welcome home. <laughs> Took me a while finding you. I told him because I was going down the local. Yeah, you've got 20 locals. <laughs> Cheers. Had a shave, have you? Yeah. You used one of my blades, did you? Oh, come on, Fletch. We're not inside now. Nothing now. <laughs> you obviously didn't. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I use one of Raymond's. Oh, he shaved, does he? Only just. Well, of course, you would know, being a resident in my house. Only twice a week. I still live in Brum. Oh, yeah. Twice a week. I bet you pocket the bed and border, don't you? I need every penny I can get. <laughs> yeah. Ingrid's upset. Why? You know. Do I? Yeah. Why? You know. Look, you keep saying she's upset. I'm asking you why. Because of your nest egg. <laughs> she told you? Yeah, well, I knew anyway. The hell? Well, you told me once inside. I never talk about that. I think you'd had one too many. One too many what? <laughs> Prune vodkas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I don't remember. Yeah, a few people do after your prune vodkas. <laughs> I thought you were going straight. I am. Straight to that turnip field in Essex. <laughs> oh, come on, Fletch. Listen, that nest egg is a legacy, that's all. It is to enable me to get on the right financial footing to start with. I've paid my dues. Not for this job, you ain't. Academic. All right, so you go and dig it up. Then you come down here, it's doubles in the bar, it's new washing machine, down payment on a new no, don't be daft. I wasn't born yesterday. I'm not going to sling it around like Jack the Lan, am I? Well, it's not much use to you then, is it? Look, shove off you, will you? I'm in no worry. You will be if I kick you through that door. <laughs> Man who strikes first blow admits his arguments have run out. Chinese proverb. <laughs> Man with fist in mouth cannot no longer give lip muswell ill cover. Look, how can you say you're going straight and then start life on the proceeds of illicit gain? I mean, forget about the money, Fletch. Your family don't want that. My family don't want me at all, it would appear. My son Raymond ignores me. All he's interested in is his extendable tape measure and his bicycle pump. <laughs> My daughter Marion, she hasn't been to see me yet. She phones me up to say hello and reverse the charges. <laughs> and as for my daughter Ingrid, she has taken up with some poncy long-distance lorry driver named Leonard. <laughs> I still love you, Fletch. Yeah. Like my old lady loves me. Heard it's living up in the lap of luxury with old Jessup the box maker. <laughs> she knows which side her cardboard's buttered. <laughs> well, they still care, Fletch. I mean, I know. I know because, well, I know them better than what you do now. Oh, you reckon, do you? Yeah, well, I know they love you. It's their respect I'd like, Len. You know what I mean? Their respect. Funny thing, I had respect in the nick. I always knew where I stood, and all the people around me. Precious little respect out here, though. Standing in the dole queues or trying to work the Paddington parcels. It's money. Money is independence. Money is respect, you know that. You can look the world in the face and say, I up my income now, up yours. <laughs> well, I thought you had more bottle than that. More bottle than what? More bottled than what you've apparently got. Look, I'm beholden to you, Fletcher. I owe you a lot for what you did for me when I was inside and the encouragement Ingrid's given me since I've come out. And I'm not going to stand by and see you ruin their lives and yours. Forget about the money, Fletcher. It's not worth it. You what? Look, just try it, will you? Try it. <laughs> All right. All right. Promise. Look, I've said all right. If I say I'll try, I will try. Hello, Dad. What? <laughs> what are you doing with that spade? Spade? What spade? The one in your hand. Oh. Oh, that spade. Uh, yeah. Well... Yeah, that gleaming new spade, what matches the gleam in your eye. Well, I just bought it. What's wrong with that? Spades dig things up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start work on the garden, ain't I? Oh, good. <laughs> This flaming surveillance. Here, <laughs> yeah, love. He's done a heck of a good job on this garden. <laughs> yeah, he never stopped. <laughs> Where is he now? He's gone down the chemist to get something for his blisters. <laughs> hey, you don't think he No, might... no, it's all right. Raymond's tailing him. Yeah. Here, how long can we keep this up? You know, just keeping an eye on him all the time, following him about. Well, it's all we can do. We gotta save him from himself. Yeah. <laughs> Here, do you have to go back tonight? Well, I should really. Oh. Unless I go back first thing. <laughs> I think you should, don't you? <laughs> 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 Here, yeah. you don't really think he bought that spade to dig the garden, do you? No. <laughs> 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 Whoa. 
Wait, never mind all that. Hello, <laughs> Fletch. I'm Andy, will you? Do you want a cup of tea, Dad? Oh, yeah, time. <laughs> I'll get you another. Is that your lorry outside? Yeah. You better get cracking on it, then. It's got 12 punctures. <laughs> I don't have to be back at work till 8 o'clock tomorrow. Meaning? He's staying the night. Oh, yeah. On that you are, then. Where else? <laughs> See my earphones? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Raymond, I haven't. Mm. What time is it? <laughs> Ten to. Mm. I missed it, then. <laughs> then you shouldn't have accompanied me to the shop, should you? Did you notice? Did I notice? <laughs> I thought I'd took advantage in a natural cover. What, standing behind them lampposts? <laughs> <laughs> your ears stuck out either side. <laughs> I know what you're all doing. It's pathetic. You're not up to nothing, Dad. Yes, you are. Yeah, what are you doing with your day, then, Fletch? Me? Oh, I've had a lovely day, I have. I've been digging the garden all the morning, then I got a fish cake for me dinner, then I went down the shoe repairers. It's all in his report there, the bionic man. <laughs> Then, Dad, your shoes is all right. Well, when I come out of neck, you see, among my personal possessions was this little uh, little shoe repairer's ticket, you see. It said Brown Brogue sold an eel. <laughs> well, that was known four years ago. Did you think they'd still be there? Well, you know, there was no harm, was there? I was passing. <laughs> what did they say? Said they'd be ready Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be back in Brum by 8 o'clock tomorrow. Well, you shouldn't have left that jacket down there with, with those keys in it. Oh, I knew it would be my fault. Tell you what, ring the police and, and report your lorry stolen and the chances are they'll apprehend him before he gets to Essex. That's a lot of use for a bloke who's on parole, isn't it? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> going on? It's your dad. He's giving us the slip. Yeah, he took my lorry. I've gone to dig it up then, is he? <laughs> it's exactly what we didn't want to happen. It's criminal. It's immoral. I never want to speak to him again. I want nothing more to do with him. Still, I might get away with it. Even if he does? No, but if he does... What? I want a motorbike. <laughs>
four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> 45, 46, 47, 48. <laughs> 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. What do you want? What? I said, what do you want? Who are you? Uh, any gardening required? <laughs> want your grass cut or anything? <laughs> or uh, crazy paving straightened up? I do all that, you know. You can make a start digging the hole for my lily pond, if you like. Oh, nice. Lily pond, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Like to follow me? I'll show you where I want to put it. <laughs> Wouldn't rather have it just here, would you? <laughs> well, all I can say is, thank heavens, we wasn't going to speak to you again. You got Lenny into trouble. I didn't know I was going to be so long, did I? You won't get the sack wheeling in. No, I rang up and said I'd broken down. They said get it fixed and bring the load up tonight. Yeah. Oh, it was right there, right there beneath me. Could only have been a few feet under. God. Here, I know. We could sell this house and buy theirs, couldn't we? <laughs> and have you digging up the floors of each room one by one? Well, I'd save over him, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, you could have a lawn instead of a carpet, then you wouldn't hoover it, you'd mow it. <laughs> all right, all right. Probably been found by now anyway. Oh. When they built the estate, there's probably a couple of Irish drain layers living in the lap of luxury in Palmer by now. Well, if they have, it's probably ruined their lives. Too much, too soon. <sighs> anyway, Dad, what? one bit of good news today. Oh, yeah. Your probation officer rang. Yeah. And she's got you a job already. Oh, fancy that. What sort of job? Well, it's with the council, you know, local government. What sort of job? <laughs> Down Wilmslow Road. What are the council doing down Wimslow Road? <laughs> Digging it up. <laughs> <laughs>